Who has not asked themselves this question before? What would happen if you dug a hole right under your own feet, straight through the center of the earth to the other side? What would we encounter down there? Is this even technically possible? And where exactly would we come out? If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Even if it sometimes disappears from consciousness in everyday life, we are all standing on a gigantic sphere rotating around a star somewhere in an infinite universe. Behind us, in front of us, left and right, there is about the same amount of Earth mass and Earth volume. Wherever we move, we are always at a kind of center. Viewed very precisely, the Earth is not a perfect sphere, but an ellipsoid. At the poles, it is slightly flattened. This effect is probably due to the Earth's axis being tilted to the side by 23 degrees. The Earth's radius is not always exactly the same due to the flattened shape and differences in the nature of the surface, for example, mountains, lowlands, oceans, and mainland. All calculated values can therefore only represent average values. Accordingly, the distance from the center of the Earth to the equator is about 6,378 kilometers. To the north or south pole, it is only 6,357 kilometers. The diameter of the Earth corresponds to twice the average Earth radius, which is 6,371 kilometers, so about 12,742 kilometers in total. If one would circle the Earth once at the equator at the surface, one would have to cover 41,750 kilometers. A hole through the middle of the Earth? To get straight to the point, Never before has a human being been to the center of the Earth. No borehole or probe has ever even come close to reaching the center of the Earth. Everything we have learned in geology or physics lessons about the structure of the Earth's mantle layers and the Earth's core is based on arithmetical assumptions or pure speculation. If one believed this information, the Earth is built up of different layers. If you wanted to dig a hole, you would first have to drill through several kilometers of granite. Then, you would have to drill through basalt and sedimentary rocks with caves, underground lakes, and water deposits in between. The outer hardest mantle should be between 5 and 70 kilometers thick. After that, there should be larger amounts of magma, liquid metals, and gases in the center of the Earth. In the middle, a core is assumed to exist, which could consist mainly of iron and nickel, possibly also silicon. The deepest borehole on Earth. During the 1980s, the Russians managed to dig themselves to a depth of 12,262 meters. Just to remind you, if you wanted to dig through the Earth to come out at the other end, you would have to travel a staggering 12,742 kilometers. The Russian drilling team had to finally give up at 0.1% of the total distance because it became too hot and mysterious to understand what lied ahead. The drilling rig is located in the far north of Russia, near the Arctic Circle on the Kola Peninsula. Geologists assume that the Earth's crust at this location would be very thin and easily penetrated. In addition to the search for mineral resources, the borehole should provide more information about the nature of the Earth's mantle. The work begun in the 1970s initially also fulfilled this purpose. With the data obtained, scientists were able to revolutionize some previously held assumptions. According to their calculations, the temperatures would have had to remain so low, down to a depth of 20 kilometers, that drilling could have been carried out without problems. In fact, the drilling team had to deal with 180 to 200 degrees Celsius already at 11,000 meters, and their 20 centimeter wide special drills increasingly failed. The rock samples also provided evidence of microorganisms that could date the age of the origin of the first life on Earth back 1.5 billion years. Another surprise were the gigantic deposits of methane. Scientists had not expected this in the middle of the last century. It is now known that huge reservoirs of greenhouse gas methane lurk beneath Russia's permafrost soils. In a strange accident in 1984, the lower part of the drill bit broke off and remained in the borehole. Several side drillings provided further insights, 
including increasingly strange noises. On tape recordings, the voices of screaming people are said to be heard, which gave the borehole the nickname Entrance to Hell. Rumors spread among the workers that a demon from the depths had sabotaged the technology and that the drill had cracked because of it. In addition to the demolition of the main drill, more and more mysterious accidents occurred at the drilling site. Since 1994, the drills in Kola have been at a standstill. Since 2008, the plant has been completely abandoned and left to decay due to a lack of money. The hole in the ground in theory. In practice, it is simply impossible to dig a hole through the entire earth. But what would theoretically happen if we did? After the first meters of dirt, rubble, and earth, we would come across numerous pipes, sewers, catacombs, old bunkers, and subway shafts in urban areas. In rural areas, there may be natural caves, water retention, or rocks just below the surface. First, a harder rock layer would follow, and then softer, sedimentary rocks. These may conceal further caves, mines, water deposits, fossils, and earth treasures. At a depth of four kilometers, we reach the position of the deepest mine on Earth. Westwitz Operations mines precious metals and diamonds in Carltonville, South Africa. In the deepest shafts of the mine, there are already temperatures of 60 degrees Celsius. Mining work is only possible with special cooling technology. After 8.8 kilometers, we would reach depths comparable to the highest mountain on Earth. At the summit of Mount Everest, the average temperature is only negative 19 degrees Celsius, even in midsummer. All water is frozen to snow and ice. Below the Earth's surface, however, it is around 100 degrees Celsius, which would bring us to the boiling point of water, theoretically because the pressure at this depth is already quite different from the pressure on the Earth's surface. After 40 kilometers, all metal objects would already become significantly softer. From 100 kilometers onward, the environment is almost completely liquid. The birthplace of diamonds is said to lie at a depth of about 15 kilometers. After an unbelievably long journey of about 6,000 kilometers, we will have reached the core of the Earth. The temperature there is between 3,700 and 6,200 degrees Celsius, which is roughly the same as the temperature on the surface of the Sun. The pressure in the Earth's interior is about 3 million times as high as on the Earth's surface. After passing the Earth's core, the journey would begin again through the various layers we've passed on the other side. Fall through the Earth in 42 minutes? Scientists are always up for a bit of fun. The idea of a hole in the ground is not at all unpopular among researchers, and so some have already come up with some interesting ideas. A team of physicists even calculated how long it would take to jump or fall through an assumed perfect hole in the ground. This theoretical hole would lead straight through the ground. The average person would need 42 minutes and 12 seconds in freefall to cover the roughly 12,000 kilometers. Assuming no air resistance or a gravitational force at the other end, he would reach top speeds of several thousand kilometers per hour. In fact, there is another factor that could cause problems for the hypothetical jump. While we don't notice on the Earth's surface, its interior is afflicted by serious tremors. Anyone who drills, like the Russians, know this problem very well. We can blame this on the Coriolis effect, which explains these inner Earth tremors are related to the rotation of the Earth around its own axis. The Coriolis force affects all bodies that are in motion within a rotating reference system. In our experiment, this would mean that the jumper himself would be hurled from one wall to the other like a sandbag in a hole several meters wide. The only way to avoid this effect would probably be through a hole running exactly from the North Pole to the South Pole. And here, we already encounter the next problem. Both points have been calculated and can cause small deviations, which would mean death for the sandbag in the tunnel. On the Earth's surface, however, the Coriolis force is responsible for the generation of extremely strong winds as well as gigantic air circulation. It's crazy, about 12,742 kilometers under our feet, there is probably a human being standing on the exact opposite side of the Earth right now. This idea fascinates and inspires in equal measure. Who hasn't wanted to know exactly which country is on the other side and which people live there? 
In science, the opposite side of the Earth and the people living there are called antipodes. Literally, antipode means opposite foot. Of course, tinkerers have been at work for years and put antipode calculators on the net. Opened up in an easily understandable way, everyone can travel to their own counterfeiters with a few clicks, at least in their thoughts. If you traveled on land, the distance to the antipodes would be about 20,000 kilometers. The hypothetical hole through the Earth currently remains pure fantasy. In the 19th century, the French writer Jules Verne had already devoted himself to the question of what is lurking down there. In his novel, The Journey to the Center of the Earth, adventurers come across underground lakes, lost worlds, dinosaurs, and giant mushrooms. Where are you right now, and who do you think could be your antipodes? Or have you already calculated it? Let us know, as always, via the comment function.